Somalia's upcoming elections face a number of challenges. The newest one is the coronavirus that has led to a number of restrictions on human contact. A 17-member joint parliamentary committee had been asked to resolve some necessary details on February 28th. Their mandate was due to expire on the 15th of April, but they had to freeze their efforts because of the virus. Right now, no one knows when they will finish their consultations. The COVID-19 outbreak has led to election postponements in Egypt and Ethiopia already. But opposition leaders in Somalia are calling on the government to stay on schedule for a 2020 vote. This is why it's important that the electoral code be adopted quickly and that it address some key issues that are still to be decided around how to link the communities to a specific geographic area, how to ensure uh, participation by, for example, uh, those uh, whose uh, communities are uh, from the Somaliland area, those in Benadir and the like. These are all important issues that require uh, urgent attention by Parliament. Here is a look at some of the key issues still to be tackled before polls can be held. Voter registration. Article 16 of the Electoral Law proposes a unique biometric system for registering voters. This solves the problems of voters without IDs and those who can't read. But biometric systems are expensive and need expertise to make them work. In December, NIEC chairperson Halima Ismail Ibrahim told Voice of America she wanted to register two to three million Somalis. She has since backed off those numbers. The National Independent Election Commission, NIEC, has only set up registration centers in four locations. Time and money are not on their side. Political party registration. Electoral law requires parties to have candidates in 50% of the districts being contested. They also have to have offices and 10,000 members who are registered voters in nine of the 18 pre-1991 regions. Most of the 76 provisionally registered parties are going to have trouble achieving all of these requirements. It is especially hard to imagine them reaching the 10,000 member threshold nine times as voter registration hasn't started determining constituencies and assigning clans. The parliamentary committee was working on creating geographical constituencies for each seat. Once they accomplish that, they will have to determine which clans get which locations. This gets further complicated by determining what constituencies will represent Somaliland. The breakaway state won't participate in elections but will be represented in the government. Additionally, they need to figure out how Benadir, which includes Mogadishu, will be included in the upper house of the legislature. There are some concerns about the frameworks governing the elections. Gaps in the electoral law need to be addressed to ensure it is implementable. Amongst other important questions, uh, such as the definition of the constituency's management of seats for Benadir and Somaliland, Estonia emphasizes that female representation should be safeguarded in the elections. Women's representation. Women currently make up 24% of the parliament. The constitution suggests that number should be 30%. The previous figure was achieved by reserving seats for women. The current law doesn't reserve any. Some formula needs to be figured out ahead of voting. Anaga, I'm a commissioner, ha harno, I'm a good me ha hade, ha never haya, Wanukuso on Anaga Shari Shari Ayanukuso on a Casso Baha, he ada has Shari Gasobia, O Kimidi Hay Barlamanku. We had the Aisan Aisan Shari Kusso behind 
أما أشرعوا كصوب حوح خلاف سن ونخد مينين حوها هوينك أما دلني يرضى أما قيل لما إذا نخد مينين أنا جشرع جاس ما دافي كرنو ويو كاس أي كاس أي أنكو شقينا هنا ماشى أي مركا أي كقل ضنت أي وحوي إن دتك هوينك اللي في جوده أنت شرع ويلا وصن صابحين Friction with state governments. Villa Somalia is not on good terms with the leaders of Puntland or Jubaland. National forces have been dispatched to Jubaland and fighting has taken place. Puntland's president has called for a national dialogue to resolve differences and get on the same page before elections. Cooperation from state governments is absolutely necessary to hold a credible vote. The first pertains to our concern at the stalemate in relations between the federal Somalian government and certain federal member states. This is a stalemate which has now lasted for more than 18 months and which represents a major obstacle to the successful conclusion of crucial projects for Somali. It's therefore urgent that this dialogue resume, particularly between the federal Somali authorities and the authorities in Jubaland and Puntland, in this regard, we welcome the mediation efforts undertaken in December by the United Nations, the African Union, EGAD and the European Union. But we regret that the fact that the Somali leaders have not provided any follow up there too. Security and money. Registering voters in Al-Shabaab strongholds, as well as protecting citizens when they cast their ballots, will be mighty challenges. No roadmap for success on the security front has been put forward by any Somali leader. The NIEC told the UN Security Council it needs $53 million to conduct the election. Opposition leaders say the government doesn't have the funds now. While there are plenty of challenges to be met, Somalia should be able to count on technical and financial support from international partners who back their effort. The UN and other key allies will certainly try and help mend fences with the states. It's our conviction that it is urgently important that there be a forum uh, through which the central government and federal member states can agree on 2020 priorities and can agree how to work together to develop a consensus on some of those key objectives. The challenges are daunting. Time is shrinking. And COVID-19 is working against timely solutions. But there is much local and international resolve for getting these elections done. ADN TV will look at who are the important players in Somalia's election efforts in part four of our series. So for everybody has to understand how the election uh, process is being conducted and how they're going to elect.